Hey everybody. So I get a lot of questions um, from time to time about how do I play high? How do I get more range, more endurance, more power? Uh, I get questions, you know, what do you practice? What's your equipment? What kind of mouthpiece should I have? And honestly, all of that is personal. Um, there's no right or wrong answer. There's things that work for some people and don't work for others and vice versa. Um, but I can give you guys some ideas as to what I do or things that I've done over the years to help develop certain things in my playing. So today we're going to talk about lead trumpet playing, uh, which is kind of a loose term. Uh, really it's about um, how to have power in the upper register is really what this video is about and that's not always what lead playing is um, but a lot of times we kind of associate that with it so there's an exercise that I learned in college from one of my college instructors um, and it's a super simple basic exercise it's just arpeggios um, but it's all in how you do it and I will say that I I recommend that you either do it with someone else so that you get this uh, concept of resting as much as you play. So you play uh, one of the arpeggios and then uh, the other person plays it back and you get this um, audience between the two of you. Uh, you get to hear how each other are doing, plus it forces you to take that time off the face so that your chops can rejuvenate um, in that time that they're playing and it's kind of in line with that Bill Adams routine that a lot of people do um, you know rest as much as you play super important so we we implement that into this if you don't have somebody to play with play the arpeggio sing it back to yourself or just you know rest in that amount of time and kind of think about what you played and, and how you can improve it so here's the exercise extremely basic um, I'm going to start on a low C. I'm going to do a major arpeggio up to third space C, and then we slide it down to low C and bounce it back up. Um, and then the really important part is you want to maintain this openness, as much, as much of an openness sound as you can. And then as you hit that final note, you want to just drill into it, keep as open of a cavity in your mouth as you can in your throat, and just go for as big and loud of a sound as you can while maintaining its composure. Don't let it get out of control. So here's kind of the basic idea. <laughs> And then the next, you know the other person would play, or you just wait your turn, um, and then you do it again up half a step. <clears throat> Repeat. I'm not gonna go through the whole thing because this video will be way too long. Um, but you just keep going up half steps, half steps at a time. Usually whenever I get to the G arpeggio, um, I start implementing on that top note um, a lip trill or some type of shake um, because that's going to help make sure that I'm not using too much pressure here on the face and that all of this maintains kind of that loose flexibility uh, that it needs to and then I'm not using um, too much pressure you know, on the face because if you put too much pressure from the horn, it's just going to kill that buzz. Um, and you, you're not going to be able to do those, those lip trills. So here's an example of that. And obviously I'm not super warmed up because that should have worked a lot better. Um, also, I haven't done these in a long time, uh, but anyway, it kind of it lets you know instantly: are you loose? Are you flexible? Are you not? Right now, I'm not. I didn't like the way that that responded, um, and so I know now that's something I need to go back to the woodshed and and hash out. As you keep going up, it just keeps going the same. So here's like a C major. You know, 
going. Again, it's all about just drilling it through. Keep it going. Again, still, I'm not as loose right here as I want to be. Um, so I know that by the time I get up to Fs and Gs above that, it's going to be a bit of a struggle. Here's an example. <clears throat> My bad. Right? <clears throat> a little red in the face. I need to go back and I need to start doing these daily. Um, <clears throat> anyway, that's kind of a, a short example um, of a fun little lead exercise um, thing that I, I did a lot in college. Um, I kind of got away from it, but it helps to make sure that you can, you know, instead of starting on that upper, that upper note and just staying up there in that range, you know, starting on that lower octave and building it up, dropping back down to it and going right back up to it and then just drilling through, put those lip trills on there or shakes or something um, to help maintain that flexibility. Um, that's going to help kind of build that endurance, that range and that power that you're going to need. Um, one thing that I did not mention is I always do this exercise on a lead mouthpiece. And when I say lead mouthpiece, again, that's a loose term. Everybody's got their own opinions as to how they label um, mouthpieces. Um, <clears throat> but for me, it, it's kind of, you know, it's a shallower piece. It's got a tighter back bore. Um, it's going to help kind of get that zing and that cut through sound that I need um, if I'm playing, you know, first in a big band or something like that. Um, so I play on a Picket mouthpiece, which that the, the guys at Picket are awesome. I, I recommend that you check them out. Um, they're in, incredible craftsmen. Um, and just their business is, you know, they just, they take care of their customers. Um, but it's a two piece, so you can, if I can get it apart. Um, so I buy my back bores and I buy my tops, um, so I can interchange them. And sometimes I do, you know, if I want a different feel on the back bore, but I want to keep the same top. Um, so right now I'm playing on a 10 SHV, so it's a shallow V. Um, so it's kind of, it's not a full V cup, um, but it gives a little bit of the quality of the V cup, but maintaining that shallow cup. Um, so it's kind of a, a compromise. Um, I get the best of both worlds in that. Um, and then the backboard is a number 10-2 with a 27 throat. Um, some guys, you know, they go bigger on the throat. Uh, I, I just keep it standard. Um, some guys go smaller. Um, but I've got a whole array of these and you can get them in one pieces. You can get them, you know, the two pieces like this. Um, they're super awesome. Um, and they, you know, it kind of helps me dial in, uh, from gig to gig, what, what kind of sound I need or what kind of response I need. Um, so that's kind of what I'm playing on today. <clears throat> anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it helps some of you, um, just give you another idea of, of an exercise you can do to kind of help build that power that you need in the upper register. Thanks guys.